I'm Christy Fall. I'm Martin Savage, in for Victor Blackwell. Let's talk about Donald Trump because he's scheduled to have his unquiet weekend, apparently, at mm. Trump Tower. There are no meetings, no events uh, on the agenda, as far as we know. A day, of course, though, after he set some alarm bells in uh, Washington because he took a call from Taiwan's president. Now, that's the first known contact between a U.S. president or president-elect and a Taiwanese leader since the U.S. and China established diplomatic relations back in 1979. And you may be wondering, what, a phone call? Big deal. Well, actually, it is a big deal. That one move could undo four decades of U.S. protocol on Taiwan, and then it risks infuriating China over its one China policy, which claims Taiwan's part of China. But it's not just Taiwan. According to the Philippine President Duterte, Trump said that Duterte is going about his fight against the drug lords, quote, the right way. That's a very violent fight. The same President Duterte who also, by the way, insulted President Obama. Washington's been critical of the Philippine government's executions of drug dealers without the benefit of judicial proceedings. So let's bring in now Stephen Cullison. He's the CNN politics senior reporter and Gordon Chang, Daily Beast columnist and author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. Uh, Stephen, let me start with you. Um, Trump's call from a leader of Taiwan. Really a breach of protocol here? Or was it just a, a mistake? Or is he subtly trying to send a message to China? What, what's your favorite on this? That's the, the answer to that question. We don't really know, Martin. It's certainly a clear breach of the protocol and practice of the way U.S. relations with Taiwan and China over the Taiwan issue have been conducted for 40 years. I think it's too early to say yet whether Donald Trump is previewing a new emphasis and approach in the U.S. policy towards uh, Taiwan. Uh, that, I think, is something we're only going to learn when he becomes president. But I think it's very interesting. Donald Trump, if you think about it, he built his political career and his campaign on breaking norms and conventions of American politics. It worked very, very well in the domestic political context. The question is, is he going to pursue that approach as president? I think this incident is clearly a sign that when you do that on the international stage, on delicate issues of diplomacy uh, and relations with other countries uh, and, and the framework of American foreign policy, you could lead yourself uh, into areas you perhaps do not want to go and create crises that perhaps could be detrimental to the early months of the Trump administration. All right, well, uh, Gordon, let me bring you in here. Um, his call, meaning Donald Trump's call to the Philippines leader, um, this is the same man, of course, who insulted President Obama. It caused him to cancel a formal meeting that he had, had planned. Uh, is Trump's phone call kind of a snub now to Obama? I don't think so. I think that this really is an outreach to an ally that we have. You know, we've had troubled relations with the Philippines for quite some time, and it looks like the Philippines is going to defect to China and maybe to Russia. And what I think Trump is trying to do... is to reel it back in. And it, this is a message to Beijing, just as his call with tying the Taiwan president. So this, I think, is part of a deliberate... You know, we've let the Chinese create crises. I think Trump right now has decided that the United States should be in charge, not Beijing. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, Stephen, uh, when we talk about uh, Duterte's relationship you know, between the U.S., it's been extremely rocky at times. And as we've already mentioned, he's pursuing these possible alliances with Russia and China. Uh, so given that, do you think that this chat by Trump is uh, fruitful, is, is, is really a good thing. I think it's certainly going to sort of add to the questions that are already uh, taking place in Asia about exactly how Donald Trump is going to approach the region. Uh, the, the Obama administration spent the last eight years trying to uh, uh, improve relations with the Philippines as a bulwark against uh, China and the rise of China in the region. Now clearly uh, with the President Duterte's new administration that has all shifted and everything is up in the air so it's true that Donald Trump could be trying a, a different strategic approach to pull China back, to the Philippines back from China. But at the same time of According to the readout from the Philippine government, uh, President-elect Trump invited President Duterte to the White House. Uh, that would be seen in many quarters as an endorsement of the manner in which he's gone about this uh, war against drug lords and drugs in the Philippines, which has led to 4,000 deaths, uh, extrajudicial killings. And it raises the question is, in the pursuit of its wider strategic goals, is the United States under the Trump administration going to sort of, sort of turn a blind eye to these sort of human rights uh, violations, not just in the Philippines, but elsewhere in the world. 
and elsewhere in the world. I'm glad you brought that up because let's talk about that phone call with Pakistan, their prime minister. The office there is saying that Trump apparently called their leader, quote, a terrific guy and said that his country is, quote, amazing with tremendous opportunities, unquote. There comes the business side of him out. Um, do you think that comments like this, Gordon, will um, harm the overall relationship with India, which, of course, is, is not a real close friend of Pakistan? Yeah, I, I think that this uh, comment was a mistake. One of the most important things that George W. Bush did, um, and one of the most important things that uh, his successor did, was to really um, bring this outreach to India to fruition. And I think that the partnership of the world's most populous democracy, which in about two or three years will become the world's most populous country, that partnership with the world's most powerful democracy is really an important one. I think that this is talking to Pakistan in these terms, is not going to help that relationship and indeed we need to be friends with India our relations with Pakistan have been troubled and getting worse and really make a commitment to New Delhi because that would help help us in a number of different areas and in fact Trump has sort of implied the same thing he sent a mixed message but that's another life after years of bullying well, her family is hoping to turn their tragedy into some life-saving lessons for all of us.